Hey everybody, everything in our business lives and dies by this. Okay, well, maybe not an SD card, but really any media recording and how you handle this is quite possibly the most important thing you will ever do. Now, you don't believe me? Well, the following has happened to me and nearly every filmmaker I have ever spoken to. You see, you can accidentally format the wrong card or the media gets corrupted or the wrong media gets backed up, which actually happened to me recently, or just the myriad of ways that you could run out of storage. Even if everything goes well, you still have to double or triple back up your footage and then proxy your footage and hand off your footage. This all delays the actual start of the editorial process. Launched back in 2015 and now acquired by Adobe for an impressive $1.2 billion. We'll talk about why that's relevant a bit later. Raymio's mission is to reinvent the way that we all handle media. And if you're not yet familiar with the platform, it's simply just cloud-based media storage with a significant infrastructure and production tool set added in. And its usefulness comes in two dominant ways. The first being as a way to immediately deliver or back up your footage on set at the time of production. The very second you hit cut, proxy files are being uploaded directly to the cloud. Now this eliminates two key steps. One being transcoding, as the process is automatically creating the proxies for you. The editor can then be cutting while you are shooting. So no delivering or shipping of hard drives. In fact, all major NLEs now support Frame.io directly within the software itself. So you don't have to go separately to their website. You can upload, download, access comments, everything from within your NLE. The proxy media can then be relinked with the original files, like for example, ProRes RAW, after the edit for color grading. Where I think it's exciting right now is that photographers can upload full resolution RAW files for, well, the same reasons, but also for safe, full quality backups while in the field. The other core purpose is remote collaboration. This is something that has shown its value during the pandemic, most certainly. And with Frame.io, your clients, your agency, producers, and various other stakeholders don't actually need to be anywhere close to production. They can watch the files come in, and immediately begin watching and giving notes back to production from the comfort of their Hamptons villa. And as such, today we are going to examine two of the more popular and accessible ways that you can start working with Frame.io. We'll talk about the cost and the realities of internet bandwidth. My hope here is to provide you with the right information to help you decide if this is really the right time for you to embrace this technology, as well as to remove any intimidation that camera to cloud may present. So straight away, you don't need any actual compatible technology as you can simply upload footage from your media directly to Frame.io. But as I've already mentioned, this kind of skirts around the most valuable usage of the platform. However, the benefits of temporary file backups or remote editing obviously still apply here. Frame.io does have a free option, ideally just for users to kick the tires. In this case, you are limited to two gigabytes of storage. So this is mainly a nice option for sending rough cuts of smaller video projects to directors to make notes on. And it's also just a great way to get familiar with the platform. Since Adobe acquired Frame.io, if you do have a Creative Cloud membership, you can get a free Frame.io account with up to 100 not just two, 100 gigabytes of storage. Now this is a great tool for proxy delivery on short form projects, but I suspect that you will hit a 100 gigabyte limit quickly if you are a video shooter. Now for example, 4K ProRes proxy is about 65 gigabytes an hour. Thus at best, it's a one project at a time plan. Frame.io's paid plans are actually quite affordable with the choice of a two or three terabyte storage, which also increases the amount of collaborators you can add. Regardless of the plan you choose, without a compatible device, you can only add footage that you already have on said media storage. Thus, the best way to actually use this platform is through Frame.io's compatible products. There are a multitude of devices and apps already compatible but we're going to focus on the ones that I believe are most relevant to you, our audience. And these are the Fujifilm X-H2 series cameras. So that'll include the High Resolution 2 and the 2S, as well as the Adobe Atomos devices. 
While we sell all models of RED cameras here at Viztech, the technology right now is limited to their Raptor models at this time and not the more accessible Komodo. On the software front, if you're a photographer, you're most likely to use Capture One, that is applicable here with Frame.io. The remaining apps, however, live in the realm of professional DITs. Concerning the integration tools we're focusing on today, the most unrestricted is through the Fujifilm X-H2 system with the required FT-X-H transmitter grip, though you are restricted to shooting on an X-H2 or 2S. Let me elaborate a little further. With the X-H2S, you can send your full resolution photo files to Frame.io as you are shooting. There is no need to have a computer or capture one. This means that as long as you have access to the internet, even in remote locations, say through your cell phone, you can be sending full resolution raw files to the cloud while you're shooting. The X-H2 2S is currently the only camera system that allows for this. Now, when it comes to video, both systems offer the same features. A one gigabit LAN port, ProRes proxy, or full quality H.265, H.264 files. There is no option currently with either of these products to allow an upload of higher quality ProRes files. You can upload those, however, or any other video file directly from your computer. If you have a very fast internet connection and the time between takes isn't rapid fire, then certainly uploading full quality H.265 files can also be a very handy option. So let's discuss the realities and limitations of this technology. On the X-H2, X-H2S grip, the LAN wired connection speed is the very same one gigabit ethernet as the Atomos Connect. Fujifilm quotes speeds of up to 600 megabits per second, which is slightly faster than that of 4K ProRes 422. I could however find no mention of the Atomos's max speed, but considering it's basically the exact same technology, I'm presuming it's the same. This means that theoretically speaking, provided you have an equally fast internet upload speed, your upload time should be similar to the time it took you to film your shot. I say theory because these kinds of speeds are usually reserved for fiber optic lines. Cable lines here in Canada typically cap out around 30 megabits per second. My own test show the following upload speeds. My home Wi-Fi came in at an upload speed of 35 megabits per second. Connecting directly to the LTE service of my iPhone 14, I got 29 megabits per second. And my LAN here at my studio was 182 megabits per second. This means that in most user situations, ProRes Proxy will be the reasonable limit of what you can upload while shooting. 4K ProRes Proxy will actually still require a very fast connection at 145 megabits per second, while HD Proxy files right in the pocket of 36 megabits per second. Now, for those who are curious, Starlink's satellite internet max upload speed is currently anywhere from eight to a whopping 25 megabits per second, meaning there will be at best a small extended wait time when uploading HD proxy via satellite with current 2023 technology. Now, when it comes to uploading photos, even the most robust RAW files, you should have very little issue with an upload bottleneck. Truth be told, for me, this is the very best reason for professional X-H2 users or X-H2S users to adopt this technology. With data speeds as they are currently and the limits to cloud storage size, it makes photography the only option for reliable field uploads regardless of geolocation. But it's less about the now and it's more about the future. This is what Adobe is betting on with their billion dollar acquisition. Looking to the future, Frame.io predicts that we will be completely cardless by 2030, seven years away. This comes vis-a-vis -vis improvements in global internet bandwidth, via low earth orbit satellites, and other camera hardware advances. The future of camera to cloud isn't just limited to the speed of data. The whole collaborative interface will also likely become one of the de facto ways in which production will be handled in the coming years. While some estimate that we are, as I said, five to seven years away, productions like the new Amazon Prime Lord of the Rings series is the very first large scale TV series to be cloud-based end to end from acquisition to delivery. So I guess that means if you have lots of money, then the technology is here now. This is all to say that the frame IO of today is really just the start of what image production pipelines will look like in the future. And thus early adoption can absolutely be advantageous. I'm now going to step back and address the practical setup with each system. Now, the setup for the Atomos Connect 
is rather protracted. <laughs> Connecting to Frame.io involves seven steps from the XH2S, and the Atomos recorder involves a rather Kafka-esque 10 or more steps, depending on what you qualify as a step. When looking at additional hardware, the Atomos Connect module for the Ninja V will set you back $560 Canadian, the exact same price as the Atomos Ninja V. The FTHX transmitter grip, however, for the XH2S will set you back considerably more at $1,280 Canadian, but does offer the additional advantage of a pro grip, such as extended battery life and ergonomic improvements. So if you were planning on buying a battery grip anyways, well, you're only paying an extra $765 beyond what you budgeted. And thus, the total costs for each product kind of look like this. In Canada, the XH2S retails for $3,200, and the grip, as I mentioned, is $1,280, giving you a total of $4,480 Canadian dollars. Atomos, on the other hand, as I mentioned, $560 for both products, giving you $1,120 Canadian, but you also need to add a camera. Fujifilm kindly lent me the FTHX unit for a month, and I use it on a few productions, really just as a way to test it out. And it was very easy to use, and I gotta say, it actually worked flawlessly. I never ran into any notable issue. Due to some of the smaller rigging issues though, in the BTS that you see here, I don't have the transmitter unit attached. Instead, what I did was connect it during our breaks and upload the proxy files. In terms of my overall experience with Frame.io, well, I've used it actually for years now, working with editors and colorists remotely. The tool is, Absolutely fantastic for leaving very specific notes on cuts or color passes. This alone warrants signing up for the free membership or using it through your Adobe account. Now, as of the summer of 2023, because you know how fast technology changes, based on current speed and availability of the internet, here is who I think each platform is best for. Okay, Fujifilm X-H2 and 2S users. This is really a great product for photographers, those either doing journalism, remote work, or commercial work. This can be, for example, somebody in a war zone doing remote survey work, or in the commercial realm, it's really becoming commonplace for clients to like not even ever be on set, or really, they're in another city altogether. So the ability to immediately upload those raw files completely untethered anywhere in the world allows for an entire suite of post-production artists to begin working on those photos the very second you click the shutter. If you're already an X-H2 or 2S user and you're shooting video at the camera as well, then it does make a certain amount of sense to buy the grip. However, buying the Atomos recorder plus the Kinect is still less expensive. And you can record ProRes RAW right into the recorder. Now, if you use your X-H2S as a video camera, then you're gonna need a monitor anyways. The FTXH grip here is advantageous for video shooters, really in only one notable way that I can think of, and that is constant upload while rigging the camera remotely or on a gimbal or any place that you wouldn't typically attach a monitor. This is a very narrow reason why the transmitter grip would be justifiable for a Fujifilm video workflow. For everyone else, particularly videographers, the Atomos Connect gets you connected to the workflow system regardless of the camera you're using with the added benefit of ProRes RAW and monitoring. For those who stream video, both systems are set up for streaming as well. And finally, it's probably worth noting that this technology will eventually find its way into every camera body. How soon? We don't know, but it's something to keep an eye on. And that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and comment in the comment section down below. We really appreciate you sticking with us and watching this. And uh, if you have anything to say about your experience in cloud-based workflows, we're all ears in the comment section, all ears and a few mouths, some eyes and a nose. Okay, for me, for now, I'm out. Peace.